So I go deeply touched here my man Chris here for hundred Chris do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. As many of you guys know, I'm Chris here 100, World War Rising, love the game, good friends with DJ, and I figured it was time that we did an interview together. Good to you, Chris. Now, for y'all who don't know, I play World War like alongside Chris. Now we're not on any alliance together, but we have fun playing. So, so Chris, let me kick this off with question number one. What made you get into the door? Uh, let's see, what got me into this game? I probably would say that I've been playing a big game for most of my career. A lot of Final Fantasy. I played a little bit of Game of War. I tried Mobile Strike, wasn't very good at it. And uh, a couple of my friends said that they were playing World War Rising, and it was kind of like Final Fantasy, but new and improved. So I decided that I'd hop on and I'd check it out and then I got hooked and a couple months later I started, uh, actually like a week later I started making videos for it and I've just been here ever since and I met awesome people, a lot of good friends like you guys for sure. Nice. Now, let me just go ahead and say, me and you have almost exactly the same story. I began with Mobile Strike Jumping Game of War, then Fog Fantasy, then I came to the Dell All. But my second question for you, Chris, is an Feel free to make it brief if you want, but what's your opinion on the packs in the game? I think initially these packs were terrible, absolutely terrible. You didn't get anything from them, no gold, anything like that, and being a bigger player like a payer on my side, it made it a pain in the butt to grow quick. But I slowly realized that these packs weren't oriented towards the big spenders, they were oriented towards the moderate to play players and even some of the lower pay to pay players to help them grow consistently because they were smart and they didn't want the whales to overwhale it. And I think they did a good idea. I mean, I'm a little salty about it because obviously I want bigger packs, but I guess I just gotta be patient. Now, follow up to that. Since you began, has the pack got the bevel of time? I'd say yeah. I've seen like the gold amount definitely. Because mm -hmm. when you get the higher tier troops with like the tier three and the tier four troops, you need a lot of resources and the packs don't give you the ample amount of resources. But the goal has definitely been there. Um, as you know, fuel is a complete and total nightmare. And they've started incorporating it a little bit here and there. I think they got a way to improve. But I, I see the resources have definitely bumped their way up. And the, the event packs are more oriented towards the events to mm -hmm. help you participate more. So I think they're pretty decent. What about you? In as someone who that's it by, let's say, weekly, like most players do. I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I've been playing it for a short time, and I have seen a improvement in the amount of gold given, definitely. But 
the fill on the one that's that like not never for me. I mean, if you step for teleport and fields, I mean, I get someone to do what you need without spending golf, but I will level spend 15,000 gold instead of this film we, we currently have no way to gather or get the size pack. Yeah, I agree with you. That hero skill change is a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Question three. And I have personally been wondering this. What made you say, oh, let me make videos on this game? Because I know we do a multitude of all games while we call this one. So, I think the reason why I started making videos for this game is I used to play Lords Mobile a long time ago. It's an old IGG game. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love. Like, I've always loved mobile war games, mobile strategy games, and everything like that. And the biggest thing that I've always wanted to do was help people. It didn't matter if I grew, but as long as I helped someone else grow or I helped influence someone, it was a job well done. So I decided that if I played this game, that I would make videos and help people as much as I can because it's no fun growing by yourself. A lot of people like to be big and powerful and take over everything, but I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that even if I'm a big player, I want to influence the lower to pay to play and even the free to play players to enjoy the game and to see it from a perspective of big so that they know that there's different factors and different perspectives for all the different players out there, if you know what I'm saying. And I just, I, I don't know, I just like helping people. And if I'm going to play a game, I might as well figure out how I can help people play it too so I have more friends to play with. That's great. I mean, I love these games because of the community at of it. I mean, you know as well as I do, no matter what size you are, you'll get it help in way. So, now, I have a, you know, thought for something that they could ask. But I want your honest opinion of this. If they have what I'm gonna call a alive city. Now you play game a lot briefly, you should know what it is, but it's a alliance base that all players can trip the RSS to and it has like a alliance bank. What's your opinion on that? Oh, the good old alliance bank. So I think it's a good idea, and the other games that I've played, they do have the alliance buildings like that, and it's a big pain in the butt, because I have to deal with every everyone trying to destroy my alliance building. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of things, with the price of the research and everything in this game, I don't think it would benefit really a lot of people, because all of our resource is dedicated towards these researches, like battle mark research and set bonus research, everything like that. They're so expensive that players aren't willing to give away the resources 
But from a community perspective, it keeps everyone involved. And I do think it builds a sense of camaraderie. But I think first they need to deduct the resource cost before they can influence one of those things. But I, I think it would be a good idea. I think it'd be a cool. But like I said, they got to be cheaper first. I totally agree. Now, my next question is simply, do you think, like all other MC games, that they will open pack this game? Um, you mean like over pack as far as content? Yeah. I think that they've already done that as far as they keep releasing things every three days and it's starting to cause a problem because a lot of people are, they were very strong spenders in the beginning of the game and when you're a game and you release things more than a week apart or a month apart, if you make the release schedule so tight so that you can get everything out in the beginning, you cause a problem because a lot of players won't know where to spend and then they'll spend at the wrong spot and then they'll end up quitting because they don't know where to go. Like. In this game, there's a lot of different dossiers for people to have. You can get battle mark dossiers, economic, combat, deployment. Like, there's so many things that they can do. I think they need to slow down before they overpack it. Because gamers, mobile gamers, when they play the game, like, about 60% of these mobile gamers play on the fly. They play at home, they play on their breaks, they play at work. But they don't have the time to consistently focus on 16 different aspects when you give people one specific goal, or maybe even three specific goals, it gives them the opportunity to grow and figure out what's going on, and then they can grow accordingly to what they need to do. But when you start adding multiple, multiple aspects, it gets confusing after a while. So honestly, I think they need to slow down. <laughs> That's honestly a good point. I, I do think that they need to slow down as well. I'm looking at Final Fantasy. In my opinion, they you know, had a good page, but towards the end of the lifespan of the game, they really overpacked it with content. But my next question and you know feel free to be host on this one is do you think and the would be well, MC games develop, would they develop in a landscape format instead of a vertical format? So honestly, that confused me when I first started playing MC games, is that they were very vertical. And I was trying to figure out why they didn't make it landscape, and I came down to two conclusions on the possibility of why they did birth. One, when I'm at work trying to play on my phone, it doesn't look like I'm playing on my phone because it's in vertical instead of landscape, so it's more sneaky and I can play more. Two, it's easier for me to play with one hand than it is with two. So I, I personally like it because coming from Lords Mobile, it was the landscape, and it felt like it was taking up too much. And with mobile games, and a lot of people, like I was saying earlier, like a lot of people are doing to work or whenever they're busy or in the car when they're not supposed to, <laughs> it's a lot easier for vertical than it is for landscape. I don't think they're going to switch that because I think it's had a decently positive aspect in the gaming community. <laughs> but that being said, is if they branch off and do different games, landscape might be introduced. All right, next. You know. I was used to landscape games before I joined any of these games. So, yeah, I, it has been real for me. 
follow through it. But I got used to it, so. Now, you play other games like this. Do you think it has some similar feel to any of NZ games? Do I think it has anything that's similar to the other MZ games? Yeah. I think this game is identical to Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, absolutely. I think, because I, I mean, I came from that recently, and just looking at the castles and everything like that, I mean, mine is though, when you hit level 40, your castle changes color, stuff like that. Haven't seen that quite yet, but as far as like the mechanics and the troops and the research tree and the way the game looks cosmetically, it's almost identical to Final Fantasy. Which scared me initially because I didn't want to play the game because I figured it was going to be like Final Fantasy. Surprisingly, in the beginning, it was decently like that. But when we did these RBRs and everything like that, like they ha they have a good release. I think that they took all of the good stuff from their old games and put it in their this game minus mm -hmm. the fuel, of course, because I don't know what <laughs> it makes me yeah. bad, because huh. I never have enough fuel. But that's my that's my opinion. Is I think it's the most like Final Fantasy yet. Now, we don't reach an introduction of the new hero. How many heroes do you think or want them to put in? I think that they need to... I think it's good because they have Zero, who's a good attacking one. They have Riggs, who's good for your economic or economic perspective as far as like monster and everything like that. Yeah. And now they have the homeboy Ronin, who is a defensive god, a raid boss god, and a control point god. So I'm trying to figure out, honestly, is if they put three attributes into him so that he would be the final character for a long period of time. Uh -huh. Because I know with Zero, they gave her a decent amount of time to grow, and then they dropped this new hero. And this new hero is defensive to the max. Like, it's amazing. He's got a lot of good stats. And I think because of those stats, that it might be a while. But you never know. Because once people max out these heroes, they're going to always ask for more. Because in uh, communities like this, once you get stuck, it gets boring. So I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be about the same as Final Fantasy, if not more, depending on what comes up and what kind of things they expect in this game. So with all the bases covered right now, I don't see any future heroes. Mm -hmm. But that's only with the bases that I see now. There could definitely be more heroes in the future. Okay, now... I have only one last re game-related question. And then, you know, they will get crazy. <laughs> but... Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, do I remember to load? Uh, okay. Now, in this game, there's a lot. You know, what's your opinion on how to work? one year before you can move to a different region. The moving one year to a different region? Yeah, like, if you go on the game and you go to the regional map, you're not able to put your base to a different region partly than you know the one I will do it off the all. Oh yeah. So I think that the regional ports are disappointing in the certain aspect that players aren't able to go to like, if you come from a family, so say you came from Game of War or Mobile Strike, and you come to a game with a bunch of your friends, but you miss it by a second, 
you're in a completely different realm and you can't even go to the other realm and be with your family so it kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> the trick around that though is have your friend create another account in his kingdom link it to your email and voila you have your own account but don't grow your account because you don't want to like waste money in that aspect okay that's my last game related question now for the fun and crazy what got you on YouTube as a creative? <laughs> um, so a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I played Lords Mobile. I used to stream on this site called Wii Gamers, and mm. I grew to have 10,000 followers over there, but there wasn't really a following over there, it was mostly bots. So then I got contacted by Streamcraft, which is another streaming software for mobile games. And they offered me a position over there as one of their streamers. So I did that for a little bit, and I was like, ah, this is all right. But then another game came out that one of the YouTubers that I follow started playing. So I started playing that game. And after a while, I just was like, okay, so maybe I should make a YouTube channel. Maybe people will influence from this. So I started the YouTube channel. I started making content for that specific game. Mm. And I found out that I love streaming. Like, I, I've always loved streaming ever since Wii Gamers. And I was like, okay, so let's let's do this. Let's see where it goes. Let's have some fun. I absolutely fell in love with YouTube. Absolutely. Like, I just, I love talking, as you can tell from this video. <laughs> yeah. In about a year and a half. But that's what brought me here. That's what made me want to be a YouTuber and make the content and the videos is I like talking. I like meeting new people. And I like helping. It's the three things I'm the greatest at that I feel at. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did about you, DJ? What brought you to YouTube? Alright, this will be funny. I initially followed my channel just to follow a tech YouTuber back in 2012. Now, I didn't know a lot about YouTube back then. I didn't pick up a camera for about a year or so. But once I did, you know, I found it to be enjoyable and fun. Now, I didn't grow in my initial five years. I did it five success until, uh, until 2016 during the big videos which I'll show up on my channel today. But on um, 2018 has, was my year to give it a push and I did an, um, uh, 152 subscribers right now and I'm hoping that they will grow. Oh yeah dude. You make some good content. I wouldn't be surprised if you got to a thousand. Very soon. Nice question. Do you want to know how long or how old my YouTube channel is? How old? I opened this YouTube channel in 2008. Really? Yep, I made a video with my little sister, and the original video was just me talking to a webcam, because I was bored. And I actually recently deleted that video. Uh -huh. But yeah, my channel didn't start going off until, what, eight years from that? It took me eight years to get to a thousand? You just keep up that grind. Nice. I'm...
I've got less questions before. You know, I lose my track of mine. If, if you want a mobile game on YouTube, what do you think you would be making videos of? I'd probably be a vlogger or do podcasts. Because I just probably just do it like a day in the life or something like that. Yeah. I just like the camera. I'd have fun. I actually thought about doing that. Stop doing mobile games and just make a big vlog. And just <laughs> travel the world and do fun stuff. Nice. I'm, like, I know vlogging is the biggest niche in the YouTube space, you have, let's say, a million people do it. What will make your vows unique? Because mine wouldn't be scripted. I just kind of go by the seat of my pants. I mean, if you see, you see my videos. Yeah. I don't have a script. I just say the most random things. Sometimes I sing, sometimes I dance. Like, it just. I've noticed that the vloggers that make a script for their videos don't necessarily have the enjoyment in their videos. I want to do something where I can be myself, possibly get monetized for it, mm. and just have a good time. Like, do something I love and not make it a job, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I could. I mean, do something you love. I mean, that's the number one goal in life when you're trying to get a job, potentially a career. Do something you love is the main deal for that. Can I let you in on a little secret? Yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you this, because it's the interview, but I don't get paid to make these videos. Alright. I just do them for the fun of it. Nice. And, right. and you know, I'm through in two days while making YouTube videos doesn't make you a whole lot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> people think YouTube folks are, you know, these millionaires with a crew and a team of editors. Now, some YouTubers have those people, but mainly they do it all on their own. I mean, like me, like you, like anyone else, is 20 to 40 hours of hard work to put out. You know, one video or five videos a week. Yeah, those guys are crazy. Yeah. And they get sponsored by companies. Yeah. YouTube. And, <laughs> like, the sponsorships of their main income source with. If you could get that, you would be making a whole lot more than You can hear that sponsors of YouTube? Or any anybody watching this video? Me and DJ would love to use your sponsorships for the good. Yeah, literally. Uh, and, well, but then 
all in the high level right there. <laughs> now, have you ever thought of making a personal website for your channel? Honestly, I'm not smart enough to deal with websites. I have an Instagram and I have a Facebook that I use for the channel, but I couldn't do a website. I mean, my main job, I stay pretty busy, so I can't do a lot of social media because I'm only one man. I yeah. wish I could. If this was my job, if I got paid to do this, yeah, absolutely. I'd have a website, I'd have a channel, like, it's a lot of good stuff. I think in the future it'll happen, but for now I'm just going to have to stick to my, my mini social medias. Nice. And mostly I have one I try to keep up with it, but I don't. And you know, it's good because you have your own space to put your videos, but you know, again, that's what we're on YouTube for, so not necessarily for everyone, so. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I know you're also a blogger for the game. How did you come across that? Come across which one? You work with the website WWR Command, correct? Oh, yeah. What got you into working with them? Well, it all started when I started making the videos. And then I got hit up and I was there like, hey, can we uh, use your content on our site? He was like, cool. That, that, that works. I'm cool with that. I don't really do anything else other than that. But it feels cool to be a part of a website. Nice. That's also why I don't make my own. Because it's, it's, there's so many places. But <laughs> it's a good website, honestly. A lot of good people. Yeah. A lot of good articles. Come check it out. Link in the comment section below. Uh, yeah. We <laughs> Put comment and describe box. <laughs> now, you told me possibly that you're not big into the YouTube and the real side of it. Yeah. Is that just because? It confuses you, or is it something else? Honestly, I don't make the videos to make money. I don't care how many people watch my videos. I don't care how many people like or subscribe. I like it because it's it shows me that there's a community that like likes my content and makes me want to keep making it. But as far as the analytics side, as far as like monetization, everything like that. And I, I don't really pay attention to it. I mean, if I have 100 people watch my videos, I'd rather have 100 people watch my videos that were interested in my content than 1,000 people watch my videos just to give me the analytics. If you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I could. Uh, now, Cliff, I have, as all of my clusters, do you have any to ask me. Yeah, you pretty much answered all the questions I had for you. Alright. As far as like where you came from, your gaming background, why you made the channel, everything like that. I'm just excited that I'm able to do this video with you. I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this for a while. Yeah, I'm like being totally honest, we were supposed to do this. What? Last week? <laughs> yeah, DJ. Last week. You ditched me. Ha <laughs> ha You know why. 
It's alright. I still love you. But you won't <laughs> feel any good yourself, so. Eh? Fair. We're, we're even. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. This has been DJ from DJ Talk. And my name is Chris Hill Hunter. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and let us know below what's your opinion of them Do you like it? Do you hate it? Whatever. We will see you next time we come around. Bye.